This will probably be the most boring video ever. How do you like that for an intro? My friend Galen Marco Poloed me last night, and I realized how important it is to just catch up with friends, like on life, on the stupid stuff and the really important stuff. I overthink YouTube, and because I overthink it, there will be these long gaps where there is no video. And so I said, you know what? I'm not going to overthink it. I'm going to put on my Harry Potter glasses, sit on our couch and just talk to you and connect to you as if you're my friend, because you are. Most of you are literally my relatives, but there's something to just connecting. So my goal for this year is going to be to lower the bar and just like the conversation that I had with Galen last night, to just connect, to just talk. I will always be viewing my life through the lens of the Bible and who God is and my relationship with him, and my relationship with him through the Bible. And I want to be a transforming, I-N-G, this active thing happening, where I'm a transforming learner. And all I wanna do here is be your friend and take you along that journey. I'm not sure it will be an interesting journey, but it's a journey. This blue light lenses are driving me crazy because I can see it in the camera. So we've gotta change locations. Okay, I think this might be better. Although I'm balancing you on my knee and I don't wanna make you dizzy. Listen, I told you this was gonna be rough. I can still see the blue light. Whatever, we're doing it. Let us connect. Notice the earrings. I've got no makeup on. I've got my Harry Potter glasses on. My hair needs work, but I've got long dangly earrings on. These are little creations by my daughter Adeline. She's 19 years old and she is an artist. She's been an artist since she was a toddler, no joke. Adeline attends a program in Georgia, but she's home for the holidays. And last week, I think it was, she had a TikTok. What did the kids say? It blew up. over 3 million views. This got her super motivated for her Etsy store because she got a lot of traffic and sales into her Etsy store from TikTok, which is her dream come true. So in honor of her, I am wearing some earrings that are currently in her store. If anybody wants to check it out, I will throw that link to her store below in the description. So that was a fun thing to happen and watch her get excited about. We also went on a cruise. We went with two other couple friends. You guys have heard me talk about Andrea Bruce, my ministry partner. She was there with her husband, Andy, which yes, they have the same name, but we got balconies this time. I'm walking out onto my balcony, which I consider to be private. I'm in my nightgown and nothing else. And I, I step out and wouldn't you know, who is hanging over the balcony with her head into my space, but Andrea Bruce. And I was screaming and yelling that I was naked. I was not naked. I, I did have something on. <laughs> Andy said it was an overreaction. We had such a good time, so much laughter, so much fun. The only downside to this was I had so many high hopes and goals of getting down in my weight to a certain point. Like I had a specific number in mind because I wanted to thoroughly enjoy this vacation without feeling so tired and my back hurting and all the other stuff that comes with being overweight. And I missed it by a long shot. So it was so much fun, so much fun with our friends. But personally, I just felt sad. And I think sad would be the right word. I didn't feel condemnation for myself. I just felt sad. I was not at the spot where I wanted to be to fully enjoy it. And the reason for that, well, yeah, let's move from fun into not fun.
my weight is firmly connected with the sexual abuse I experienced as a child and a teenager. I gained, I believe it was close to 100 pounds in less than a year. That weight gain started at the age of 19 after my abuser who abused me as a child, but at the age of 19, he assaulted me. And after that happens, I consciously or unconsciously, I don't know, I felt like the reason he was doing that to me was because because of how I looked. If I could change how I looked, that would keep him from doing it again. And as I say, it was unconscious. It was, but it was also conscious. I would literally eat until I was sick and be like, nope, you've got to keep going. As if it were a goal I was trying to meet, which in a lot of ways I was. I would buy clothing during that time. I would buy it big so that I could grow into it. I mean, I would consciously be like, nope, I'm going to go the next size up so that I've got room to grow. When I lose weight, I start to feel not good. I don't like the feeling of losing weight. I don't like how that feels, but there has been so much growth by God's grace in me, in this particular area over the last four years, because it's only been in the last four years that I actually came out to my family, told them what happened. If you've been around enough, you've heard me talk about pretty intense counseling and I feel different. I have always sensed that I would have freedom with food, that I would not always need to carry this weight as protection. I have much trust in the transforming power of God on the inside of me. I, I deeply do. But it's always seemed very far in the distance, as if I know it's coming, I just don't know how or when or what that will look like. And that does not mean I have not tried and I am not trying. But there is a work that is very deep. This stuff is like stuck deep down in me. But after confronting, I, I don't know any other word to use for it, speaking out what is true to my abuser, asking him, why, why would you do that? Why would you harm me like that? Being specific about what he did do to me, how that's affected me, how it's affected the way I view myself, my ability to connect with others. It's affected every part of my life. And there was something to that something to standing up, using my voice and facing him. Well, really it was over the phone, but you know what I mean. That it has me really curious or I'm not sure what that word is. It's not quite excitement. It's more like curiosity, like hopeful. Maybe that's the word, like a uh, curiosity and a hopefulness that God is continuing to do something because I feel a lot of freedom from having that conversation with him. I've been dreading that conversation. I could have never imagined having that conversation with him or anyone else for crying out loud, even six years ago. I would never, never imagine having that conversation. But God has brought me and my family through a lot of undoing and healing. The healing is not done, but I have a lot of hope. Did I just overshare? I probably did. I have no idea how long this was. This is just to say, hey, I'm here. I'm excited about this year. I'm going to show up here once a week. Should I say this out loud? I don't know. I'm going to show up here once a week and just share with you what God's teaching me. And sometimes that will be about my life and what's happening on the inside of me, on the outside of me, what I'm learning about ministry, about life, about my family, about friendship, and I hope you'll stick around for it. And if you don't, I actually, I don't blame you. Sunday at 2 p.m., I will be here. I'm making that commitment to you.